Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, over the last two days, I had so many really interesting conversations with various people in the ecosystem and builders on Nair that last night when I was in the taxi going home, I realized that I needed to reshuffle my whole presentation and change an argument. And so basically, if I stutter and you know, if I don't know what I'm talking about, that's because this is absolutely brand new content and I've never actually delivered it. So, yeah, my name is Oleg, I'm co-founder of Sweatcoin and the CEO of Sweat Economy. There's a little bit of a complexity about us because we came from Web 2 to Web 3. Sweatcoin that you see on the left there is the business that we started in Web 2 and Sweat Wallet and Sweat Token is what we've been, you know, kind of drumming up about and we launched it last year actually at this event. So this is actually my third NIRCON. I realized it this morning. First NIRCON in 2021, I tailgated somebody into the event. Well, that somebody is actually Pamir Gelenbe. Uh, he told me, you should come with me. I popped in. Pamir introduced me to Ilya and to Alex. Well, the rest is history. On next NIRCON in 2022, from this stage, we made an announcement that we were going for our launch. And while I was talking, the team was furiously doing the biggest TGE in history of Web3 with more than 13 million accounts created over the period of 36 hours. Everyone was nervous. Ilya was nervous. Technical teams on both sides were nervous. Our CTO did not sleep for 36 hours, but they delivered it and near held, which is an absolutely incredible testimony to the quality of the product and technology built by this team. And today, we're going to be talking about the death of Move to Earn and what's next. And the sneak preview is, it's not about Move to Earn, it's not about segments, it's not about products. We need to think bigger and bolder, and we need to start building economies. We need to go beyond what's out there right now. So, Quick recap, because I don't know if uh, all of you know our history. We started in 2014 with Sweatcoin, and the idea was it pays to walk. So it wasn't charity. It was hard to, read, uh, uh, to raise money because nobody could understand how could you actually pay users to walk. And, you know, we managed to prove that it actually is working. Last year, we launched what I believe is a true revolutionary thing, because we are not thinking about tokenizing existing asset. Uh, asset. We are thinking about creating an asset that did not exist before. We believe that physical activity has tangible, non-zero value. Everyone is talking about it, everyone agrees with it, but it doesn't have financial expression. And that's why we launched Sweat, which is tokenized physical activity. And this, our objective is not to shield the token and is not to do utility pumps, dumps, etc. We would like to create it so that it's traded and we know how much our physical activity is worth. Now we're getting to move to earn. The biggest question that I am getting asked time and time again, sometimes several times a day, is is it like Steppen? <laughs> uh, God, you know, if I could actually get near for every time this question was asked, I'd you know, probably be richer than uh, Ilya. And the next one is, is Move to Earn dead? Whew. So let's actually answer this question because, you know, definitions of what dead, you know, can be different, but I actually went and I looked at what is constituting Move to Earn. And, of course, it's actually dead. You know, look at Steppen. And this is market capitalization of projects. From uh, all-time high, Steppen lost 92% of their market capitalization. Step up, minus 82%. Genopets, minus 91.8%. We are not much further down, actually. We are minus 52.3. And then it made me think, okay, 
if we're thinking that move to earn is dead, then let's look at the whole crypto. And actually, the whole crypto from all time high is down more than even our project. So that pretty much means that crypto is dead, right? No. Oh, I mean, last few weeks are definitely very, very encouraging. But, you know, before that small tick up, we were actually just at one trillion dollars. Now, is it death or are we too early? And if we dig into that question, we actually see very interesting things and very interesting parallels with another industry. And I am pretending to be a student of history, so I went back and I looked at the internet. Oops, sorry. And you know what I've discovered? That if you actually look at the index of internet stocks, it is almost mimicking the trajectory of crypto development. And if we are you know, assuming that we are somehow trailing internet, then we would now be roughly somewhere in year 2002. If we're looking in terms of user adoption, we are now in 1996 of internet. And I think that this is quite an interesting parallel because you know what? This is the industry, internet, that between 96 and 2002 has become from curiosity and thing that geeks did into a truly mass market phenomenon and started engaging not hundreds of millions, but billions of users. Now, are we sure and is it guaranteed that we will follow that trajectory? My answer is no. I think that there is a lot of stuff that still needs to be done. And there are major blockers and major barriers that we still need to overcome together. The first one is we really do have too many crooks and thieves in the space. And I know that quite a lot of people would disagree with me, but I actually agree with Gary Gansler when he says that this industry needs to clean its act. It is absolutely incredible how these people are damaging our livelihoods and are pushing away users that otherwise would have been engaging with us already a long time ago. The other barrier is we really have very, very confused definition of success. I mean, look at this project, Crypto Dick Butt, $1.4 thousand dollars. I mean, there, is, there is a lot of stuff that is very, very, very strange. And you know what? It's also another parallel with internet. I don't know if many of you remember 93, 94, 95. There were absolutely incredible number of projects building on the internet that were absolutely batshit crazy. And last but not least is we do not have an email. Those that remember 95, 96, 97, email was that mass market proposition, mass market application that made internet get into everyone's minds and into everyone's homes. We do not have that ubiquitous product that appeals to billions of people and makes them change their habits, change their lives. Now, what does it mean? How are we going to go about it? And there are two things here that I'm pretty much certain and they're guaranteed to happen, and there is one question mark. First, we know that there will be regulation and prosecution. Like it or not, there will be more regulation and there will be prosecutions. We know that they're already happening. You know, the you know, FTX um, process continues, but you know, he's already been found guilty on seven counts. And I think it is actually a good thing. I hope that there will be more people that will think multiple times before doing something like that, before meddling with users' funds. The second thing that I'm absolutely 150% convinced of, that our success definition is going to shift towards active users from TVL. When I see right now blockchains comparing themselves on total value locked, they don't make money on locked value. 
locked generally is not part of a metric that gives you something positive. We are all talking about liquidity. We are all talking about engagement. We are all talking about activity. Something that is locked is not active, is not doing anything. It is just sitting there, and it's a vanity metric. And I think we should stop comparing projects on TVL. Active users will definitely win. Third question mark still, what is going to be our email moment? What is going to be that product that is going to make Web3 get into the psyche of billions and billions of people? So I will focus on this last bit. You know, the other ones are pretty much ticked. And I know that some of you would not just, you know, would not agree with that. But actually, if you think about 96 to 2002 of the internet, that was the biggest breakthrough that made internet go absolutely ballistic. Everyone in West Coast have, of the United States, VCs and founders, started measuring success and you know, feeding their egos on talking about active users. The bigger, the better. The more ambitious they were becoming. And that means that the founders, instead of thinking about cottage stuff that is generating profit but doesn't have necessarily scale, started thinking, what are the problems that we're going to solve for hundreds of millions, for billions of people? Google started, I believe, in 2003. Correct me if I'm wrong. Facebook started roughly around that time. So all of these monsters that we are now talking and calling big tech were born out of these founders chasing active users. Now, what would be the approach to designing and creating a product for the next billion people? And first and foremost is it needs to start with a problem that hundreds of millions and billions of people have. And I'm not going to pretend that I have an answer. I mean, we have our answer, because sweat coin, obviously, and sweat economy is solving a real problem. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a scale that we have right now. 145 million uh, plus users on Web2, and 9 million users on sweat wallet. The problem that we started with is very simply, people want to be more physically active. It's a genuine intent. Huh? No, no, 9 million on Sweat Wallet. Um, everything good needs to start with a problem, not with an idea. You know why? The explanation is very simple. You build a beautiful product, you have an idea, and then you need to sell it. And in order to sell it, you need to find someone whose problem this product would satisfy. And there is nothing sadder than a beautiful product that people spend a year or two building, and then they are looking for someone to take it and solve their problem. And the reason why they're in that situation is because they did not start with a problem. Another benefit of starting with a problem is you never pivot. You do not have to pivot, ever. You don't freak out your investors, you don't freak out your team, because pivot when you start with a problem, is an adjustment to a product because you learn something about the problem and those users that you didn't know before, and you just shift around and you become more and more targeted with your product, and you become better and better at solving that problem. That is a lot easier narrative to sell to anyone than when you have not found the problem to solve and you need to completely pivot and go for another idea. Second point is simple UX and language. Our users do not understand HODL, BIDDLE, staking. We had to change this vocabulary completely. And this is not to talk about seed phrases, 24 words that you can't take a screenshot of or copy and put it somewhere. You have to scribble it down on a piece of metal, split it in half, put it in two different safes in two different locations. Users, the next billion, are never going to do that. They would love to be good at OPSEC, but they are not going to jump through so many hurdles. So, simple UX. Third, it has to be native mobile. Next billion people does not have laptops. They do not have desktops. 
they are preferring native apps to even mobile web. So starting with this is absolutely and incredibly important in order to get mass market adoption. And last but not least, this next billion people are not whales. There are millions, hundreds of millions, probably billions of them, but very low value. And that means that we have to think altogether in a completely different fashion. And accepting $10 transaction cost for the next billion people is not going to work because for people in Africa, that would be like half a year wages. Nobody's going to pay that. So, and you know, because we're here at Neocon, that gives you a whiff of an idea. Where else would you actually be building this product? What other chain can give you the combination of all of this stuff and founders that actually understand the importance of each of these uh, points that I'm making? Now, there are a lot of conversations around product innovation, and I'm getting sent quite a lot of decks. And my biggest frustration that I see right now is that we continue to innovate largely for whales, and nobody or very, very few projects are thinking about minnows. But if you want to have a vibrant ecosystem, you cannot just have whales. You know, it's, it's not diverse enough we need to start building products for minnows because then it's going to be a vibrant ecosystem. We also should not forget the roots and the ethos of Web3 because we wanted to democratize things. We wanted to bank the unbanked. We wanted to give products to people that are excluded by the existing industries and existing players. So minnows is the original mission and they are terribly underserved right now. What is our hypothesis? What, is, what are we doing for the, uh, for the Minos? We actually learn from an amazingly huge economy that everyone's familiar with, but is not thinking about it in terms of XXX to earn. But Attention economy is actually pay attention to earn. It's only about 150 years old, and by some estimates, it's seven trillion dollars. It's five to six times bigger than the whole crypto that we're so proud of. Now, what do we learn from attention economy so that we can take it and build a movement economy? There are amazing similarities between paying attention and being physically active. Specifically, they are, it's valuable to you. Everything that you know and people that you meet starts with you starting to pay attention. If you're physically active, you benefit. It, both of them are also valuable to third parties. Advertisers are paying for your attention. Uh, healthcare providers, insurers, employers, and ultimately, governments are happy and will be paying for your physical activity because it is actually good business to them. Let me give you an example. You know, why not accept some or portion of your taxes in sweat? Or, you know, let's not chill just sort of our project, but tokenized physical activity. If you have it, that means that you're taking care of yourself, that you're putting less pressure on healthcare costs in the country that you're in you're going to live longer. In the most cynical fashion, it is good business because you're going to generate more tax revenues over your lifetime. It is give a little and actually benefit a lot. Now, third one, scarcity. You do not have unlimited amount of attention. Neither you can produce an unlimited amount of physical activity. And we know that scarcity is extremely important. With these three similarities between attention and physical activity, we can conclude that actually we should start going beyond products. We should start thinking really ambitiously and start building economies using Web3 and this technology that we have available to us as a basis, as an enabler of this very, very ambitious goal. Now, what 
what are we doing to others beyond ourselves to actually push for more of you? And I'm saying you because there are a lot of founders here, and I hope that there are people who are thinking of building on Near. We are sponsoring Hackathon that is happening in another venue, and the strand or the uh, swim lane that we're sponsoring is DeFi products for the next billion people because we believe and we put our money and our bounty where our heart is that products need to start being innovated that are geared towards billions of users. And we called it SweatPay, that's a sort of code name, but actually this is something that we're really, really keen to bring to reality and allow those tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people that right now have smartphones but are excluded from banking system to enter into traditional finance and allow them to spend that crypto anywhere where they're spending cash right now. What are we giving? Again, we're supporting our thesis that it's all about users. The winner is going to get 50,000 users put on their product so that they can understand it, test it, and verify that they have product market fit. And we'll definitely be very, very keen to help them. And of course, there are some cash prizes. So let's really focus on building for Minos and building economies, not just products. And perfect. Perfect timing. I don't want to stand between you and the beverages that are served over there. And now I think that we should just go and party and celebrate this amazing event and all of those amazing announcements that we heard today. Thank you very much.